opportunity to witness things that almost nobody in the world has ever seen before is it's a big discovery right hello volcano freaks um i've got something for you maybe you have seen the headlines that have been coming out in the last two days west coast shaken by earthquake near underwater volcano as experts warn eruption is imminent so is that really so and what do the earthquakes have to do with this? This is about our friend actual Seamount again. I've reported from on location, well not at the volcano, but I was on the beach where these surveillance cable that lead directly to the underwater volcano are coming in because this is highly surveilled now because this time they want to catch the eruption on camera and they have a lot of instruments and undersea cables and seismic instruments at that monstrosity of a volcano it's really really large so now we had how they call it a major earthquake that has rattled the oregon coast near this highly active pacific northwest volcano which experts have been saying will erupt in 2025 and we've been really patiently or impatiently waiting for that. Um, the USGS has recorded a magnitude 4.2 earthquake less than 185 miles from Oregon's coastal town of Barview on Wednesday morning. And But the quake's epicenter was roughly 200 miles from the actual seamount volcano um, away. And uh, so is that really related, guys? Um, I've told you many times before, when I see these earthquakes, they're located along the Blanco fracture zone. So they're not the Cascadia fault or anything else, more than tip of the San Andreas fault. So actual Seamount has last erupted in 2015 and has been building towards another massive explosion this year. But what we can say about the earthquake that just happened it was the third major seismic event in the area in just two weeks so what's going on there but definitely what we can be sure is that this earthquake won't be the tipping point that is setting off the volcano or anything else and of course they have always been recorded hundreds of smaller tremors around actual sea mount um but these nearby quakes is the Blanco fracture zone. It's basically where tectonic plates not subduct in this area, they slide past each other, other than the Cascadia subduction zone that's nearby. That's due to produce the big one, magnitude nine or higher. You see this on the map. The Blanco, the Blanco fracture zone is a right lateral transform fault off the coast of Oregon and it marks the boundary between the Pacific and the Juan de Fuca tectonic plate. It's a highly active area. We've seen earthquakes there. We've discussed this at length. Um, has frequent earthquakes but it usually poses no tsunami risk for the coast of Oregon because it doesn't have a vertical movement that would set off these earthquakes and also the earthquakes are far offshore and this transform fault as we see it it's interesting it it, it connects the Gorda ridge and the juan de fuca ridge but there's something else that is new now for actual the researchers thought that Axel is going to erupt this year, but you know, we have mid-November, they only have like six weeks left. So I have heard today that they have reversed their opinion. Is this based on science or just say, oh, well, we don't want to be wrong. We better now delay it before 2025 is over. No, I'm just kidding, guys. But they say now it is likely to erupt mid 2026 to late 2026 Ugh. so do we have to wait another six months or a year why well it's because of the land that is rising on top of the volcano we always know earthquakes accelerate gas emissions accelerate land rise is accelerating bah! right uh like in Campi Flegre, by the way if you want to learn about this super volcano in naples and italy check out the end screen guys um, they thought it might erupt in 2025 and you know they're admitting that they know that they don't know but 
Recent data that they have suggests that the underwater volcano could take a little bit longer before it blows its top off. Basically, they predict that the eruption will likely come later than predicted. But it could, they also say, it could still surprise us this year. Known eruptions, 1998, 2011, 2015. They have successfully forecasted the eruption in 2015. And what they say is that that's why they think they can forecast it, because they say the eruption at, <clears throat> at actual seamount, they follow a period of high seismicity and steady ground inflation that is caused, of course, by magma rising from below the seafloor. And the last three eruptions, they happened um, at at similar but slightly increased level of ground inflation. So each eruption needed more ground inflation to trigger the eruption. So we've seen this in Iceland, right? Now they say, well, the, the volcano is likely to erupt again if it has reached the same level that it had, the same level of amount in the magma chamber that it had before the last eruption, or maybe it needs a little more. And right after the 2015 eruption, um, and by the way, aren't these stunning underwater pictures from the Fumaroles and from all their test instruments and everything. So inflation below the actual seamount volcano has started right after the eruption was building up again. But then this inflation rate has gradually declined through the year 2023. And by the summer of 2023, the uplift rate was nearly zero. So they were thinking, well, was that it? But then in the fall of 2023, the volcano said, nope, that's not it. So rates of inflation and seismicity has picked up again. And the takeaway from this is they think that a fundamental change has happened in the magma supply to the volcano. What changes? They don't know. Maybe another pipe had opened that would fill the magma chamber. And they already knew that by the end of 2024, actual seamount had reached 95% of the inflation level that has preceded the eruption in 2015. So they thought, well, we're close to the threshold. It's going to happen pretty, pretty soon. But then something mysterious has happened again. Then by late April 2025, the inflation rates have slowed down again. And then this, this month, they have basically said that it's time to revisit their prediction. And they said, quote, it will take a bit more time than we anticipated to reach the same inflation threshold that the volcano reached before the last eruption. So given the current rate of inflation, we don't get that to a higher inflation threshold until mid to late 2026. And I have compared this with Iceland a few times because they think that this Oregon underwater volcano is bound to behave similar like Iceland's Kafla volcano, where the amount of inflation needed for an eruption also there increases slightly. And we've seen the same in Swartzengi from each eruption. And how, how high was this inflation threshold? Well, in 2015, it was about 12 inches, that's roughly 30 centimeters higher than it had been in 2011. So scientists assume now that a similar increase in uplift might be needed before we see another eruption. How high are we right now? You see the graph. The ground is four inches, that's 10 centimeters higher already than it was minutes before the 2015 eruption. So we are in this territory. And um, potentially it needs another eight inches, that's roughly 20 centimeters to rise um, before the next eruption. But what the scientists are telling us, it's really just an educated guess, but it's also based on the previous behavior of volcanoes like Kafla. So interesting. Of course, they can learn if a volcano erupts more frequently, they can learn its behavior versus Campi Flegrei, right? What's the reason 
that it needs more magma bef before it triggers another eruption. Well, the reason for this increase in inflation with each eruption might be, or maybe, um, that the magma that is rising to the surface is compressing the surrounding crust. So it makes it harder for magma to rise again. Magma is always taking the way of least resistance through brittle stones where it can come up. So it's hard to, to take this the same spot that it had taken years prior. So it needs to find, needs to blast a new mining tunnel, so to speak. But also the scientists say, these inflation thresholds will not increase indefinitely because the Juan de Fuca Ridge releases compressive stress in the crust as it spreads. But they're also telling us <laughs> inflation rates and inflation thresholds are unpredictable, which makes estimating the timing of an eruption very, very difficult. The, the forecasting that they're trying to do um, these are attempts based on a simple pattern recognition in past monitoring and speculation. Yes, guys, speculation about how that might play out in the future. And speculation, that is a lot in volcanic eruptions, right? Uh, this one erupts more frequently, so the speculation is a little bit easier. But if we look at Italy, it's very hard. And this volcano is really showing signs of eruption. And if anyone tells us this is not going to erupt in the next 10,000 years, it's just bogus because nobody can know. The scientists admit that they know that they don't know, but they can only look at the data that they have and I'll get to this Campiflegre, check it out in the end screen, because study after study is showing us that the crust is weakening and what the consequences of that could be. If we see a weakening crust, magma rising up or hydrothermal fluids rising up, this is always very concerning, especially if this is the most densely populated super volcano in the world. So with our friend, actual seamount, if it erupts, there's no danger for the Oregon coast. There's not going to be a tsunami or anything like that. It's very, very deep down. There's a lot of weight and pressure from the ocean on it, but it'll be a spectacle when it erupts because we will hopefully have it on camera. So guys, I hope you liked it. Check out the videos in the end screen. So much is going on. If you're interested in what's going on above us, hey guys, check out this video um, about the interstellar object 3i atlas it has seven jets now so is this responsible for the acceleration that it has shown for the increase in speed guys this is crazy check out the end screen i see you there in a second